Hey everybody, it's John, and uh, we're getting ready to do the hardest part of harvesting honey, extracting honey, bottling honey, and that's actually doing the extraction. And from my point of view, the hard part is that I'm so spread out here at my house. I've got a pole barn. I've got a wood shop where I work from a lot for, for my day job. But then the other hard part is dragging everything out from the pole barn, dragging the honey out from the wood shop, and then setting up the temporary extraction room in my garage, my well, my wife's garage. So she she uh, was was lovely enough to loan me half of the garage for the extracting season. Uh, this time next year, I hope and pray that I'll have a dedicated extracting room set up. I've done a lot of work out here in the in the bee yard in the pole barn. I'll show it to you real quick what, what my plans are. So here's just the image of some of my bees in my bee yard. I got the hoop house there I built up last year. But um, what we've done, the people who owned this property before we owned it, they uh, actually drilled a well that they never tapped into. And there's a septic tank they never tapped into. So we're gonna tap into both of those. Uh, you can see the, the, the underground line there that I ran water and a water hydrant out to the hoop house so I can water the garden from out there. Um, we also ran it into the pole barn and I've got it ran back to the wood shop and I apologize for the mess here. My son's still cleaning up a lot of stuff that he's got before he moves to college. But anyway, um, so we, we're gonna have water ran out to the pole barn. We do have water ran out to the pole barn now and to the wood shop. And uh, hopefully the wood shop next year will be my extracting room, dedicated extracting room. And that way I won't have to do all the setup. But right now, you know, I've got to lug, uh, I've got to lug everything in from the bee barn right there, all the equipment out to the garage. You gotta run the hot water out. Uh, everything's got to be sanitized, cleansed and sanitized. And of course, all the extraction equipment gets uh, cleaned, sanitized. I've got a hot water hose coming in out from the sink that puts out some very, very hot water. Uh, it's a hot water nozzle as well. I mean, it is hot, hot water. So it'll help uh, take off any honey residue propolis things like that but um first step is to clean all this up make it sure it's sanitized and dry and then we can set up the extracting room so it's a lot of work goes into everything um we'll talk about each piece of equipment here later on but uh, a lot of work goes into cleaning everything up hauling it in out from the bee barn and putting uh, setting up the extraction room so uh stay tuned Okay, unfortunately, the lighting in the garage is not the best. So probably it's gonna impact audio quality as well. But you can see we've got one half of our two-car garage uh, kind of sorted out to be the extracting room. I've pulled all the supers out that we had under the de dehumidifier. They are now sitting on top of this table we built. And it's a process. So this is how I do it. I'm not sure it's gonna work for everybody. Uh, hopefully you'll get a, a good tip or trick out of here that you might like and, and enjoy. Um, but here we go. So I set up all my supers right there. I'll take frames out one by one and I'll set them on this stand right here. Now I inherited these, these came from my, my mentor. I don't know, um, what company they are, but it's, it's pretty ingenious. If you think about it, you got the, um, we got a wooden rack here with a screw. We're going to sit the frame on. So it'll hold the frame in place as we do the extraction. Okay. It drops down to a grate, which I will cover in, um, a veil so it will help help collect the comb and, and whatever that would fall off the frame below it it would all drop off down into this uh, bucket and this bucket is built on a wooden stand with a slight tip downhill tilt to the opening down here so all the honey can drip down as it dries the wax whatever can go in here and uh, I can collect some additional honey from here. Now again, I don't know if this is a Man Lake product um, or who, who made it, but you could easily build one of these out of some totes. Again, everything's been washed down, um, sanitized, anything that's gonna come in contact with honey. This is what I use. I use the stuff called One Step, okay? No rinse cleanser, and just follow the directions uh, on the label. So there you go. So that, that's the first step. First step, I take the honey frames out of here, I put them on this thing, scrape them down, scrape them down, the wax cappings will fall down here. I have a chance to drain out to this bottom bucket. I can collect some more honey from there when it's over with. And from there, let me walk around the other side, it's a little easier. 
But I'm doing this right now with the door open, uh, and I'll show you how it works when we actually do the process. From there, after I'm done with the frame, I will set the frame in this sink. It's just a normal sink um, with the drain. So I've got the frame, a holder here for the frame and a holder there for the frame. And the frames will go this way, again, letting excess honey drip down. And uh, beneath that hole there, it, it drains into a food grade bucket that's already been cleaned and sanitized, ready to go. Once I've got this sink loaded up with frames, I will then put them in the extractor. Now this is a, an old Man Lake extractor, uh, also an, inherited from my mentor. He had it uh, fabricated so that it would hold 20 medium frames. So these are, it will only do mediums now. It will no longer do uh, the deeps, but that's okay because all my honey supers are mediums. And um, I don't know about you, but I don't want to carry around a deep full of honey anyway. So it may be better for overall cost and production. I don't know. I'm not going to argue that fact or that matter. But um, I will tell you, it's, it's a great extractor. It's done me very well. And of course, you know, we have the top back here. I'll close this before we get started. You'll notice that I have plastic on nearly everything, right? So I'm walking on plastic sheets on the floor. I've got stuff covered up here just to prevent dust from getting in the honey. I don't want anything getting in the honey um, that I can possibly prevent. We want to be very clean and I want to give, have a good quality product to uh, sell to my friends, family and customers and clients, all that good stuff. Once it goes through here, once it goes through the extractor, I will pull those frames out and I'll set them on this super right here. This one's on wheels. So again, we'll have, uh, that's my little cart there. So I have the supers full of frames there that I can put back out on, on the bees and they don't have to worry about messing up and creating new comb, things of that nature. As I open this tap right here to go into a food grade bucket that's not yet there, it will run through the first filter. Okay, it's a small filter, uh, just, just trying to get all the garbage out that may be there. Um, we want it to go on. And then from there, I'll put it in on this thing. This used to be a, uh, a hand extractor. We just turned it into a tank. So I've got a filter cap that sits on here. I'll pour the honey in one more time to get uh, more filter out. And then honey will come out. From there, once we have that honey from here in a food grade bucket, we'll then go over to the bottling tank where I will put the honey in the bottling tank. This is a Man Lake, I believe, no, Walter Kelly. Okay, it's an older one. Uh, the spinner does work. I don't think I'm gonna go through enough honey to make it necessary to have to have this thing spin. So um, I do have it plugged in it's warming up it's like a 90 degrees i believe right now and that's where we'll keep the, the honey as we bottle it so the bottling cap i got i stuff to put on yet but uh i will show you this process i just want to give you a quick walk through uh before i close that garage door because once once that honey is out and about those girls be coming in here uh, sniffing that honey so i didn't want to extract with that door open it does get hot in here but that's the price you pay for not having a uh, standardized extracting room, but this is what I've got. That box is full of honey bears. I've got ball jars. You know, I've got everything ready to go. Uh, just now need to start the process. It's a slow one, uh, but I'll try to fast forward so you can see how I do everything. Now, generally speaking, I'm a one man show. So sometimes my kids will come in and help. Sometimes my, my wife or daughter may come and help bottle, but uh, generally speaking, it's just me. So I want to give you an idea of the workflow the process of what that extracting room should look like, even though it's kind of in disarray right now because it's a uh, because it's a two car garage that I'm borrowing. Basically, uh, the way I've got my my layout, you've got the frames right here that you're going to pull from. So these are frames that we're going to uncap. Then you've got the uncapping tank. Forgive my riding here, but I'm just trying to go pretty quick, quickly. So from the end capping tank, then you have the wash tub where we set the frames that have been uh, uncapped. They're now sitting on the, the wash tub and I'll pull them from the wash tub and put them into the 20 frame extractor. From the 20 frame extra extractor, we then go to another, like the two gallon or the, the two or three frame uh, extractor I showed you before where we just kind of filter it out. And that's our first filtering tank process. So I'm just gonna call it a filtering tank. 
just to get the wax cappings out, the dead, you know, the legs, things like that, any, anything that should not be there. From there, once it's filtered, uh, we would pull the frames. I put the frames on a mo movable cart. So we'll call that frame cart. That frame cart is movable. You can see a link to one of the carts that I built previously. It's really handy to have. Uh, I've got three or four of them now. So I just take the frames out, put them on the cart, and I can move that cart out of the way. And from the filtering tank, we would then go to the bottling tank, which should be set up here in an ideal world. It's not, um, it's not in my garage, but ideally this would be the bottling tank. This is a heated tank that can, can just has a jacketed um, area in it. So it keeps the honey at a higher temperature, not enough to kill off the benefits of, of, the, uh, of the honey, of the raw unfiltered honey, but just enough to keep it more uh, liquid in order to do a better job at bottling. And from bottling then, we would put them into storage tanks or storage containers. Uh, if, if I've got honey bears, I can put them in, in you know, a honey bear cart. If I've got pint jars, I can put them in pint jar, quart jar. But this would be basically the, the storage for all the, all the, um, for all the bottles that we've, we've bottled previously. And I could even, if you wanted to, you could add right now, you could put, if I had a permanent structure, this would be the honey warmer where we could put uh, five gallon buckets, we could put bottles, we could put whatever we wanted to after it came out of the bottling tank. So the, the important thing is understanding the workflow. You wanna, if you're, especially if you're a one man show, you wanna walk as, as little as possible and be able to go quickly to get the job done. And so whatever works best for your setup, that's what I'd recommend for you to do. Now, the one thing that's not pictured on this paper is my uh, dehumidifying rack, which is essentially the same uh, size, nearly the same size as my frame rack, but I've got a place where I dehumidify, um, dehumidify the frames. So if, if we're worried about having too much moisture in the honey content, and this is going to be another video, it's going to be a very short video, but I would I highly recommend you check it out. But keep in mind, you want to monitor the workflow. You want to make it as easy as possible on you, especially if you're working alone or in a large group. You've got some people out there, and obviously this is for a smaller scale beekeeper. You know, I've got around 30 hives, so I'm not going to be bottling any more than, than the, this equipment would allow me to do. But um, you know, if you're, you're somebody between you know, five hives and 30, you start monitoring your workflow, figure this one out. If you're doing a hand crank on extracting, man, that will get old really quick. So ha having a, a nice extractor motorized, I highly recommend you get look into that one. The uncapping tanks, I'm sure there's plenty of videos out there how to build your own but the ones from Man Lake that we're using are, are great. Um, and obviously I really enjoy the bottling tank that I have. It makes it filling up the jars very simple. But I just wanted you to see an, an aerial shot kind of of what the workflow process should look like to make it easy, easy in for the frames, easy out for the storage and, and easy out for the, the bottles once you have them filled up. Um, having these movable carts, which I've got another video on that that you can check out, they are simple. Yeah, you know, I think it's like a two minute video. And uh, you know, you want definitely want to have these things. You can move them, wheel them in, wheel them out. It's easy to get out of the way if it's there in, in the middle of your way, but you want to have a place when the, when, the, when the empty frames come out of the extractor, you want to be able to set those back up in supers and you want to get those back up on your hives as soon as possible. So now onto the video to show you the whole process. Okay, you're gonna get started here. Put the gloves on. These things are cheap, at least they used to be before all this inflation hit. Um, that being said, I don't mind having honey in my fingers. I just don't like touching everything around the world with it and then get on doorknobs, get everything, everything else. So got a whole big box of these and I will dispose of them as, as necessary. And sometimes my hands are too big and it pops the glove anyway, but at least I'm trying to take a little precaution, a little, try to be a little clean. I can. I will now that I see my watch is still on. The watch is going bye bye. I don't want to get honey off of that thing. These garments aren't cheap anymore. Okay. Come on. All right. So I did not inspect these when I pulled them. Uh, I saw a few frames that I, I definitely liked and wanted to keep, uh, but I don't know what some of these are going to look like. So if I have one that's not capped far enough, if I'm worried about the moisture content, you know, I may uh, just put it back in the hives. But that one's not capped much at all. 
it's probably dry enough, but I'll, I'll probably use a refractometer and check it out before I, I pull that one out. Okay, so what I do then, I typically set the frame on the corner right there, or this area in there that didn't do anything with. I like to use a decapper. So I start at the bottom. Some people like to use knives. I've used knives. I just like the capper, the decapper better. And I use the board that I have right here to scrape off. And all we gotta do is just get a little bit off the off there. Don't, we're not taking off tons and tons. Just a little bit to de decap it. Spin that around on that screw that I've got. Just go underneath. Now again. Some people like to use knives. Some people like to use heated knives. I've never used a heated knife. So I don't know if I'd like that better or not. I did try using a knife several times and I just like this decapper better, I think. Gives me better control, generally speaking. I find that I probably have less waste using the decapper as, as opposed to the knife, but whatever, uh, whatever option you wanna go with, whatever works for you, I like to get me one of those big old cowling extractors that some of these guys have, but that's uh, years and years down the road for this guy. And as I mentioned before, my, you know, my least favorite part of the honey process is setting up and cleaning up uh, all the equipment for the extraction room. One of these days, if I had a dedicated extraction room, then I might enjoy it a lot more. All right, if you can see this frame, how dark the honey is underneath this, these white cappings, pretty sure that is locust honey. Now, I'm not positive. I'm not positive it's locust honey, but I think it is. So we're just gonna call this whole batch spring honey.
Okay, we had a lot of honey that just wasn't capped to my satisfaction. So uh, I'm not gonna do that much today, but uh, at least show you how my setup works. So you can see where the wax cappings fell down. I've got a, a vent there with a veil on it. I don't know what you call it, cheesecloth, something of that nature to help catch some of the junk. And it's gonna drain into that bottom bucket where I can tap into whatever honey drips down there at the end. You can also see my wash tub here, my plastic, you know, when you have a normal wash tub. You can see where the honey has dripped out there and how it's going down there into a food grade bucket to collect any additional honey there. So we've loaded up the extractor, as you can see, and we're getting ready to put the lid on and do the extraction. It works like a centrifuge. I think it goes this way and all the honey will just come out and spill out. I gotta put the covers on first before we do that. Um, yeah. The key is if you got a really heavy frame, you wanna have a, 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 across from that another real heavy frame and vice versa. Otherwise you see these bench weights, which you can tell by looking at me, I don't use those anymore, but I've got those in the bottom here just to help it uh, from shaking and vibrating. So I'm gonna put the covers on. All right, we're gonna start off slow. slowly increase the speed. And the longer I let it run, the more we'll get out of there. Look at the size of the walls. dedicated honey extracting room, but I am blessed to have all this equipment. I mean, I know there's lots of beekeepers out there who would really love to have an extractor like this and the setup that we've got, you know, you know so I, I do consider myself blessed to have what I have. Just wish it was more convenient at times. And the plastic on the floor not only is it to keep dust away, but invariably I'm going to spill honey somewhere. And I don't want my wife yelling at me for getting on the garage floor. <laughs> And while we're having the extractor run, uh, we can come over here to my bottling tank. Again, this, I believe this is a Walter Kelly tank. But I've got a bucket holder. So I had, I had a five gallon bucket that I still hadn't bottled yet. We're getting ready to bottle it. Uh, these bucket holders are nice. If you don't have one, I'm not sure who sells them, who makes them, but it is exceptional. It really is, a, is handy just to put the five gallon bucket up there and let it all drip out and drop into the bottling tank or um, folder or whatever you got. Okay. Now for the boring part, as if it all isn't somewhat boring. I suppose there are people out there in this world that really enjoy this sort of thing. I'm not one of them. But my son just graduated high school uh, and he's get, preparing for summer camp in college. My wife's with him. I don't know where my youngest is. My daughter's out with her boyfriend. So it's all up to this guy. At least this time around. So I got a big old box of honey bears and just filling them up. Now what I do is I typically will fill it all the way up as close as I can to the brim, right below the top line. And it's, it comes out pretty quick. Like I said, the, the honey's warm in here and so I will fill these up routinely uh, with as much as I can get in there. We've got the caps, the seals on the inside. There are people who put um, a plastic seal around the outside so they're basically tamper proof. I may start looking at doing that at some point in time, but right now we've got a very full bear all the way up to the top and that's how I like them. And so, I'll keep doing as many as I can with the honey I've got in here.
All right, there's our first bucket of about, uh, I don't know, well, use 20 frames, I guess, but not all those 20 frames were capped enough that I could use them all. So uh, that's the first step. Got our extractor. Now we're going to do the first filtering portion, which will go through this wire mesh right here. And I got Killian in the background helping me bottle now. Don't spill any more though. Um, Dad, it was my first one in two years. Too. Well, still. Uh, so we'll put some cheesecloth right there to help get all the gunk out. What is cheesecloth? And then we'll dump the, uh, dump the bucket in there. What is cheesecloth? Okay, it's the old uh, Man Lake two frame extractor, I believe. Maybe it was a three frame, I don't know. But we, now we just use it as a filtering bucket. So we've got this fil uh, filter on here. And all it's doing, you know, we're not filtering the honey. It's raw, unfiltered honey. That's like, we're, like, like what, we, what we like to say. That's how we sell it, uh, raw, unfiltered honey. All we're trying to do is get the gunk out. The wax cappings, the bee legs you know, stuff that would fall into the honey. So that's all we're trying to do. Um, we never go down below 400 micron. And typically I only, only go 600. This is clearly much bigger than 600. So uh, like I said, it's our first round and we'll go down to like a, maybe a 400 or a 600 here to finish it up before we put it in the bottler. Okay, so I believe that's a 600 micron filter and that'll just get the remaining junk out of this honey. Let's see how it looks. Nice, bright yellow color, spring honey. That stuff's gonna taste amazing. Liquid gold. Liquid gold, let me see this. Wow. Some nice good. unfiltered honey right there. That's pretty buddy. good, doesn't it? Yeah.